Hello friends, welcome back to another exciting journey of learning Terraforms for beginners. And in today's video, we are going to talk about a meta argument called hash life cycle. But before we get into a depth of that, until now we have learned what are meta arguments. So meta arguments has an argument that can be used with every resource type to change the resource behavior. And Terraform supports multiple meta arguments. So one of them in our previous video, we have talked about count, how can count help you not to repeat your <clears throat> code again and again if you want to create a multiple ec2 instances you can just specify count equals to two or three and it will create the ec2 instances where you have the same configuration uh, defined for each helps us to create a dynamic configuration so today we are going to talk about life cycle and in the upcoming video we are going to talk about depends on provisional and provider. Uh, this meta argument, which is name has life cycle is not much use in the production environment, but from the um, interview perspective, or let me say from the, for, from the Terraform associate certification preparation perspective, you should be aware about the meta argument called has life cycle. So without much further delay, let's get into the theoretical knowledge of life cycle and then I'm going to basically show you a demo as how a life cycle can be and helpful uh, when you are working <coughs> on um, <coughs> the Terraform in, uh, on creating the instances, um, whether it's an AWS instance, Google or Azure using Terraform. So without much further delay, let's get into that. So friends, let's together learn the life cycle meta argument. And here is what the life cycle meta argument is. The Terraform life cycle meta argument is a nested configuration block within the resource block, which can be used to specify how Terraform should handle creation, modification, and destroying of resources. So in short, you can define find the life cycle uh, block inside the resource block and it will help you to handle the creation modification and destroying of that particular resource and how does the syntax look is life cycle curly backets and you have something called has um, option or i would say an attribute or an argument of life cycle meta argument called has create underscore before underscore destroy equals to true don't worry we are going to touch the theoretical knowledge of this and i'm going to explain to you in a demo session also so that's what how the syntax of life cycle meta argument looks like now this life cycle meta arguments have certain options, attributes, or an arguments available for you to handle the resource activity happening around it. So the first one is create underscore before underscore destroy. Second one is private underscore destroy. Uh, third one is ignore underscore changes. And the last one is replaced underscore trigger underscore by and now we are going to touch the theoretical knowledge of all these four defined attributes options or call it has the arguments of life cycle meta argument let's get into the first one create underscore before underscore destroy using this attribute you can create new object first and then destroy the old one this helps in reducing the downtime so let me give you an example. You have defined an EC2 instance with an instance type call has T2 micro, but now down the line, you want to change it to C1 dot micro. At that time, you will use this life cycle create underscore before destroy. So what will it done is when you execute Terraform plan, it will basically first show you that it's going to create C1 dot micro and then it's going to destroy T2 dot 
micro uh, EC2 instance. So that's how you can handle the behavior of resource creation and destroying of the resources. Going to the second one, which is prevent destroy, as the name suggests, this option prevents Terraform from accidentally removing the critical resources when the change in result in the restriction or the creation of resource. And this is where this really happens when, say, you're dealing with an S3 bucket. And in that, you have basically defined certain files. Now you want to basically uh, change the uh, uh, change some configuration or give an ACL related to an S3 account. And at that time, you can use this to prevent the critical information, which is already there in S3 bucket before even executing the uh, ACL permissions, right? And that's that's where the prevent destroy will come into picture. And that's what I recollect. And, and this can be also useful when you're working with Azure SQL databases, storage accounts, or any other resource which holds an important information. Moving to the third meta argument is of lifecycle is ignore underscore changes. As the name suggests, these attributes allow you to specify which attribute of resource should be ignored when Terraform compares the desired state of resource with its current uh, state. And this is how you can use the syntax. A typical example of that is you have defined a resource with a tag called has production resource and it has a configuration of T2 mi uh, micro. And now you are creating a resource with C1 dot micro, but you want to keep the tag has production an environment and that's where you can use this ignore changes this is a very simple example but on the screen you can see we have defined a resource um, aws underscore instance example and we have an instance type t2 micro ami user data hello world and then we want to basically avoid uh, the instance password to be changed right so that's where you have used make a use of ignore changes which you can see on the uh, uh, screen now the last one is replaced underscore uh, trigger by uh, and this uh, option allows you to replace a resource when and another uh, resource changes for an example i have defined a very simple example to that is I've defined a resource uh, for a UAT called as T2 micro and I've given a tag UAT and that is driven through a variable, right? And at the same time, I am basically now replacing that uh, resource with the C1 micro and when it's C1 micro, I want the value of the tag to be changed as div in Roman. And that's where I can use replace underscore trigger underscore by. So when the resource value changes, instance type changes to C1, my tag of that should be now replaced with a dev in Roman. So that's where you can use this replace underscore uh, trigger underscore by. That's what I remember, uh, a classic example of it. Moving to the last one is the customized conditions. Among with those meta arguments of life cycle, what we have covered, life cycle meta argument has another argument which is called has a precondition block and a post condition block. And as the name suggests, precondition block is used to ensure certain conditions is met before the resource is created. And post condition block is used to execute a specific actions or checks after the resource is created. And you can see the syntax on the left hand side of the screen. And on the right hand side, you have an example. Say I want to, do a classic example is if you want to install a specific Azure SQL database or the Oracle database, RDS, uh, 
thing, you you need to basically install a specific version. At that time, you define a precondition. And after you have installed, you have you want to make sure that there are certain flags which needs to be enabled, and that's where you define the post condition. So that's a classic example of using the precondition block and a post condition block. I hope. Until now, you have got an idea of how can you use the lifecycle meta argument while working with the resource uh, block in Terraform. And now we will be going with a small demo where I will be walking through a small diagram to make you understand of this lifecycle meta argument. So without much further delay, let's get to a demo session. So let's quickly go through the demo, okay, of uh, create underscore first underscore destroy and ignore changes. We will also see if we can go through the pre and post thing, but let's just focus on this first, okay. So here is what you are a user and you have written a Terraform code here, okay, uh, which creates an EC2 instance with T1 dot micro and the tag given to this is broad. Okay, with this lifecycle thing, what you can do is with the create destroy when you write this in the resource. A block which is your create underscore first underscore destroy and in that piece of code you have you have made this as equals to true and in your now in your Terraform code, uh, you want to create the EC2 instance, okay, with C1 dot micro. So what this piece of code will do here is it will create the C1 micro and then it will destroy this. So this what happens, it basically allows you to reduce your downtime without impacting the business or kind of thing. So when you execute Terraform call, it will say it will first create C1 micro and this. And if you are also using uh, ignore changes, okay. So what will this do is, <clears throat> what what is your thought here is that you want to create C1 micro and keep the tag has brought. So that's where you basically use ignore changes where once this is created, still your tag remains broad. <laughs> so that's what ignore changes and the create first destroy helps you to maintain your resource, create your resource, modify your resource before destroying the old one. So that was a short demo. Uh, I did not went through a practical session kind of thing since it has been hardly used, uh, but in the interview perspective or might be when you're preparing yourself for the Terraform SOCS certificate, there would be few questions on this meta argument and you should be aware of it. So. I hope this video was really helpful and gave you an understanding of life cycle uh, meta argument. Uh, if you really found this video uh, has uh, added a, a new learning to your skill set, uh, do subscribe and share with your friends and do not hit to uh, do not forget to hit the like button and the bell icon to get notified whenever I upload such kind of videos. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.